QuickBooks Desktop 2023, Rental Estimate and Customer Deposit. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the home page to the gray area, view drop down, high icon bar, open windows, list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial, PL, profit and loss, change that range, 10123 to 123123, and customize fonts change 14 o y k and reports drop down company balance sheet standard with the customization range and change you know 101232 and fonting to the numbering changing 14 in okay yes and k there it is that's the setup process we've been doing every time going back to the home page in a prior presentations note that our primary source of revenue has been with the selling of inventory and that's primarily our focus because inventory is often more complex as we have to track the inventory but we also touched in on the service items and we thought about kind of a job cost system that might be similar to a bookkeeping company or a law firm in our case us having a staff in essence guitar teachers that we're going to bill out their time they enter the time we bill it out now we thought about kind of a rental setup so we've got our guitar equipment we're going to have people come in and re rent the equipment we'll set up an estimate when they call in and request the rental we're going to want a down payment when they request it so that we will hold on to the equipment and if we're not going to give it to somebody else and make money on it elsewhere we want to make sure they're committed to the transaction that's why we want the down payment and then we can then create an invoice that will will seal the deal when they pick up the equipment or possibly when they return it and then of course we'll deposit and so on so uh we set up in a prior presentation in the lists drop down item lists the kind of things that we would need to rent. So we could have, for example, all of our equipment is rentable and we're gonna, and then maybe we'll make groups of those equipment, but that's quite complex. It's a lot easier oftentimes to say, hey, look, this is the base rental set. It, it, it has two guitars, it's got a microphone, it's got an amplifier, a drum set. That's what you get for the set price of the 2000. If it's more than what you need, it is what it is. That's the baseline that we have here. If it's not enough to what you need, then we've got some add on stuff for, for like a drum set. We added on a, like a drum set or I'm sorry, we added up an advance for the, for the amplifier and another guitar, for example. So that's the general uh, setup. So there's, there's our items. Now let's imagine someone calls in, they're saying, Hey, I'm calling in, I want a drum set. So we're gonna say, okay, let's go to the estimate here and say, well, let's make an estimate to see how much it might cost you. Uh, and, and then we can, we can go from there. So let's say this is customer. I'm just gonna make another generic customer. You're not even trying anymore with these generic. I know, customer number five, customer number five. Quick add on the customer number five tab. This is gonna be on 227. Let's keep that as the date. This is our first estimate. So it's, it's populating just like an invoice. I'm gonna say, okay, so you want a band set, you wanna rent the band set number one, and that's uh, $2,000 there. And then we've got the, uh, they want, let's say they want another guitar or they wanna increase the value of the guitar. They're saying those guitars suck, we wanna step up. And that's okay, that's okay. That costs another $50 
if you want a rental add-on for the level up of guitars that you want. So they're gonna want that, and let's say they want two of those, two level up guitars, and then we're gonna say, okay. And then they also want another amp. So we're gonna say they're gonna rental, they, not, when they want another amp because they really wanna piss off the neighbors and the one amp's not enough. Let's say they want four of those just for, just for the hell of making our estimate here. So let's say the, the estimate then comes out to the 2,300. Let's actually make the equipment like this one a different, let's make that $40 for the amp instead of 50. I'm gonna make a change there. I'm gonna to go to the list drop down. I'm gonna to go to the item list and I'm looking for that rental, that rental amp. Let's make, so, so this one, the amp is $40. Let's go back to my estimate. Yeah, I got the wrong one. This should be the amp. There it is. Okay, sorry for the confusion. So it looks like an invoice, but it's not an invoice. It's not actually gonna record anything, but can be used then to populate the invoice. What we might do from this point is to take that 2,260 and say, I'm gonna have some set amount that I want to collect as a down payment. And then we can enter the down payment and base it on the estimate if you wanna follow through with the with this estimate. So first, let's, let's just record it. I'm gonna say, let's record the estimate save it and close it and so now if i go back to the home page we've made the estimate it's not going to have any up impact on the financial statements but if i go to the customer center here and i go into the customers and i go to customer number five we now have this estimate so if they call up or if they come in asking for the guitars i uh, you know what they what they requested we can go into the estimate and check it out and make an invoice from it here so what we want to do now is to enter a down payment. So we're, I'm just going to imagine it's $200. You might want to base it on the actual sales price, like whatever, 10% of the sales price, but we're just going to make a generic $200. We're going to say, okay, if you want us to hold on to the guitars, let's go back to the homepage. You need to give us some money up front. So I'm, there's a couple of ways we talked about how to collect this advanced payment. So you can go into those two ways. This is basically under, unearned revenue that we're entering at this point in time because we're going to get money before we invoice. We created an estimate, but we did not invoice because we haven't yet done the work. We haven't rented out the stuff. So we're getting paid before we do the work. The easiest way to do that from a bookkeeping standpoint is to record the receive payment first, which makes a negative receivable, which isn't pr completely proper from a financial reporting standpoint but it works quite well to link that to the, to the invoice. So again, if you want to get into more detail on unearned revenue, you can take a look at those two methods in the prior presentation. Again, from a bookkeeping side, I think this is a, a good way to go. Okay, so we're gonna say this is gonna be customer number five, customer number five tab. We're gonna say that we want $200 from them on the 27th, we'll keep that. It's gonna go into undeposited funds. I'm just gonna keep it in cash as our default. There's no invoice to tie it out to because we're getting paid before the invoice. What's this gonna do when we record it? Well, it's gonna decrease accounts receivable even though it's not tied to a specific invoice creating what they call a credit, something that can then be applied to a future invoice. And the other side is gonna be going into unearned revenues indicated here. Let's save it and close it and check it out. So I'm gonna say, save it, yes. It's saying a credit for the overpayment will remain on the customer's account. Now a credit, just, just so you know the terminology, if you know debits and credits, it can get kind of confusing when you start talking to like, like accounting software here saying it's gonna be a credit or when you talk to the bank and they say they're gonna credit your account and whatnot, you start to think of credits as meaning something other than like a debit or credit. But notice, the, all this came up from just debits and credits, which don't have any positive or negative meaning originally, because this, this customer represents a, a receivable to you generally, an accounts receivable, and a credit would mean that we're lowering the accounts receivable. So it's gonna be a credit or a lowering of the accounts receivable. So I'll, just so you know for the terminology, let's say, okay, let's, let me show you what I mean here. If we go to the balance sheet, we're gonna say, okay, let's go into the accounts receivable. And if I go down here to the payment, we got a payment down here of the $200. Now I put it to customer number one. I'm gonna change that to customer number five. Let's do customer number five, because that's I'm gonna double click on this and let's change this 
uh, payment. Let's bring it to customer number five and see if I can make that and say, okay, yes. Okay, so there it is. Now it's going to customer number five. All right, let's close this back out. And so there we have that. So you can see it decreased the accounts receivable. So if you think about this from a debit and credit standpoint, the, the credit is a lowering uh, of the accounts receivable. That's kind of why from a bookkeeping standpoint, it's a credit. It's a lowering of the accounts receivable that has not been applied out to an invoice, which is gonna have to be applied out to a future invoice would be the general idea because an accounts receivable is a debit balance account. We lowered it, we credited our accounts receivable account. Okay, so then obviously from the customer standpoint, when I say I'm lowering, I'm crediting your account, I'm lowering the amount that you owe us, that's kind of a good thing oftentimes. So if you go to the credit card company and say, and they, if the credit card company says, we're gonna waive the fee, I'm gonna credit your account. Well, that's a good thing. We start to see that as a good thing because that means our account that we owe them is going down, but it really comes from, you know, just bookkeeping debits and credits. Debits and credits aren't good or bad. But in any case, let's, let's go into the customer receivables and go into the customer balance detail. And we can see here for uh, customer number five now that we've got this negative balance. That's where it's not exactly proper from a financial reporting standpoint, because we should be reporting a positive liability, not a negative receivable for customer number five. However, from a bookkeeping standpoint, we have the support ledger of accounts receivable. It works quite well from a bookkeeping standpoint, and we can always do adjusting entries at the end of the year to properly match out receivables and payables if we wanna use that method using basically kind of like adjusting entries process. So we talked about that in prior presentations. If I go to the customer center for customer number five, now we can see what's going on here. We got the payment, the prepayment that we can tie out to the invoice when this customer actually comes in for the guitar rental, rental or possibly when they bring the equipment back or whatever. And then we've got the estimate that we can use to create the invoice when they come in and actually rent the guitar. Now the other side of this transaction went into the balance sheet for undeposited funds. Let's just go ahead and make that deposit now. So I'm gonna go back to the homepage and finish this transaction. I've got a one in the deposit area representing the one sales receipt. So I'm just gonna go into there and say, we imagine we deposit it at the end of the day. That's the only one we have thus far, checking it off, okay. As of the 27th, this is gonna increase the checking account and decrease undeposited funds back to zero. Save it, close it, check it out. We've seen this transaction in the past. I'm doing it a little bit more quickly, double clicking on the checking account. We've got the deposit then being made. Undeposited funds has gone down. It's not visible because it's a zero balance. If we wanna see zero balances with activity, we can customize advanced and I wanna see active stuff okay yes and i want to see it so i can drill down on it and see that it went in and out of the undeposited funds so that looks proper closing that out now in the future if i go back to the home page we expect customer number five to come in for the rental and then we can create our invoice from the estimate applying out the receive payment to the invoice you know at that point in time so that's what we'll we'll look forward to in future presentations. Let's first go to the reports drop down and check our numbers at this point with the accounting and taxes, trustee TB trial balance 010123 to 123. Customize it, changing the fonts up to 14. So we get, let's go to 16. Okay, yes, and let's see where we stand on our two legs of debits and credits here. See if those two legs are strong. So we're gonna go through here and say, if you tie, if it doesn't tie out, try changing the date, it might be a date thing, and use your drill down, zoom in feature to make any changes necessary. We will be doing a transaction detail report at the end of the month's data import to double check our numbers a bit more at that time.